to Paint Your Own Project. I'm Cheryl Fawn, and I am your host today, and I'm gonna be teaching you some really cool techniques. So for some of you that don't know me, I have been painting for well over 30 years, and I've owned my own faux finishing company for the past, that's 18 years. So I know a lot about paint, and I know a lot about techniques. I do uh, wood grain on garage doors, I repaint, uh, resurface um, kitchen cabinets, I do faux finishes on walls, and I repurpose furniture. And there's one thing I've learned over the 18 years in business is how to improvise on some things and how to save money. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you in this video. Not just how to paint this piece of furniture, but how you can save money and um, make money if you're out there selling your own products uh, or your own pieces of furniture. How you can save money to make more money and not have to have all your product eat up the cost of your project, okay? So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do a raised stencil design, and as you can see, I've already done that um, on a couple panels, and I left the bottom two empty so I can go back and show you how to do that, okay? And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to make your own chalk paint. I'm gonna add a video in here to show you how you can save a ton of money on your own chalk paint, making your own chalk paint. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a three color chalk paint blending technique on here that you're just gonna absolutely love. After that, we're going to distress a little bit and then we're gonna use a wax to kind of deepen the color, enrich it, and kind of give it some depth. And the last thing I wanna show you in here is how to make your own drawer pulls. So we're gonna take these off and we're gonna make some new ones for you. And you're gonna love that because that'll save you a ton of money. The one I'm gonna show you, they sell on Amazon for $25 for one drawer pull, and I'm gonna show you how to make that for probably about $2, that's it, okay? So stay tuned, and I'm gonna show you how to do the uh, ray stencil, and that'll be our first step. Okay, so I'm on the floor, and <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to do the ray stencil on this, but let me tell you this too, I did not have to do any prep to this um, armoire at all. Uh, the only thing I had to do was clean it, and I cleaned it with TSP. The good thing about working with chalk paint is there's very little prep, okay? So there is one little step we're going to do before we put this ray stencil on here. And let me tell you what I'm going to be using first. We are using, and this is just joint compound, you know, the drywall paste. That's all this is. It's so dirt cheap, and uh, you don't have to use expensive uh, plasters or products out there to get your ray stencil look in the way I'm doing it. I just use joint compound. This stuff is literally $20 for five gallons. That's how I buy it because I use a lot of it. But you don't have to buy it that way. You can buy like a little pint size if you want. So that's all this is, is joint compound. So the very first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna find a little stencil that we like. And I just selected this one because I had it and I thought it was pretty. And it'll work on this door. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to take the area where I'm going to put the stencil and I just want to stuff it up a little bit. Just enough so that when I put this stencil on, it'll have something to stick to. So I'm going to find my center. I'm going to take that on. Whoop, let me get some more tape here. I'm going to find my center. I'm going to tape that on there and tape it on the bottom, okay? Then all you're going to do, get a spatula, get your joint compound, and then you're just going to take a little bit and you're just going to just put it right over top of this, not too thick, just enough to cover it. And when you're pulling it out, pull it out all the way because if you lift, you're going to lift the stencil and it's going to bleed through. So you just want to kind of put it on there. Make sure they're all filled in. And try and get it smooth. There we go. And that's it. We're gonna do this, and then we're just gonna pull this off. And there you go, and you get a beautiful stencil. Now we can do this again without having to clean it every time, but I would suggest if you're gonna do a lot of these, clean it at least every other time. But you do want to clean the back of this because if you lay this down on there again, you're going to have that bleed through. See how it has product on there? And it's going to show. So the best bet for you to do is just to wipe that off. Get it clean. Just take a rag. 
That's all I'm doing. I know you can't see it from up there. There we go. I just cleaned it off. That's all I did. So the back of it's nice and clean. I'm going to lay that on there again. Find my center. And then I'm going to add some more. And I'm just going to keep doing this until um, I'm done with my whole project. And then what you can do too, like don't put it on too thick because it'll take too long to dry. And then after you pull it off, see that little piece that's down there? Just wipe that off. That was a bleed through. Just wipe that off. What I usually do is I have a fan blowing on this so it'll dry quickly. And once it's dry completely, I just take a sanding block and I'll lightly knock down any peaks that are on it. You don't want to sand it down, you just want to knock off the peaks. And then after that's done, just brush some primer over top of it like I did on the other ones. You can use any primer you want. I had this gripper laying around in my studio. So just brush them on there and what that's going to do, it's going to seal the joint compound on there. It's almost like an Oreo cookie and it gives it the, uh, the seal on it, seal of approval. So it just seals it off and gives it some, um, I don't know what you want to say, it just makes it more durable, I guess. So just take any kind of, you know, primer and put that on there and then we can go on to the next step. Okay, see you next. This is step two of our project and then this step we're going to paint this entire piece in our first color. And what I was uh, showing you in the last video is how I make my own chalk paint. So I'm going to kind of reiterate because some of you probably didn't watch the video. So what I did was I took two tablespoons of my magic powder, mixed it with two tablespoons of water, and then I mixed it into my paint. Now I got this paint here at um, Home Depot. Three dollars for this paint, but that's all I need is one little cup of it, basically. So I don't want to go spending forty dollars in a quart when I can spend three dollars on this little, you know, little one cup color that I need. And then the other colors I'm using are from Sherwin Williams, the first color I'm gonna put on here. So you can mix colors together or different products together. It doesn't matter, as long as it's flat or matte, doesn't matter if it comes from Sherwin Williams, Home Depot, Benjamin Moore, whatever. Whatever color you have in your studio, use it up, that's what I do. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So here's my first color, and I'm using this color, it's called Dramatic Blue, and that's going to be on this entire piece. Now I'm only going to add one layer of this color on there, I'm not going to do two, and sometimes when you're doing that only with one, you know, one uh, layer, you'll see kind of brush strokes. So here's another little trick for you. If you want to have like less brush strokes and you want it to flow nicer, then you can add what they call flow top. And this stuff is amazing. I use probably about a third of a cup to a cup of paint. Just mixed it in there. It's almost like a glazing uh, process actually. And um, it just helps you with the roller marks so it doesn't show as much. So if you want to use that little trick, um, it works really well. So I'm going to use my favorite brush. And I love this brush for doing bigger projects. This, these brushes here are really soft and beautiful. They don't leave a lot of brush marks especially um, with this chalk paint. And I also like my round brush or my square brush. Well, if I'm gonna be doing a piece like say just in here, look at how perfect that fits in there. So it's really a nice brush for doing smaller areas as well. So I have those available. If you're interested in taking a look at those or trying them, you're gonna love them. That's all I use now in all my brushes is this um, nice soft brush. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my paint and I'm literally just going to paint it on there. Isn't that yummy? I love, love, love this color. Now let me just tell you this too. You're probably wondering why I have the door shut and you're going to wonder how you're going to get inside of there. Don't worry about that. We'll take care of that at the end. Right now I just want everything to flow nicely when I start doing my blending. We can open those up later and we can fix that and I'll show you how to do that, okay? So right now we just want to put our paint on, on the entire piece. And you don't have to go super thick on this. Just get it on there. Remember, we're gonna be layering this with other colors, so a lot of this will be hidden anyway. So don't really worry about the brush marks that much. 
it's all going to be blended. See how I'm getting in there anyway? Inside of there. Get it on. Just paint it on. You want to kind of keep it somewhat smooth in one direction. Go right over the hinges. Don't worry about those. You want those to blend in too. Isn't that nice? What a beautiful color. This is going to look so pretty when it's done. Now remember, you can use any colors you want. I'm just using these colors because I happen to have these in my studio. I've got so much paint in the studio, I could open up my own paint store. So if you're going to be playing around with colors, the bright colors work really nice. Um, and they're really just, they're just yummy. I just love them. But you want to have contrasting colors. So another idea is because this paint, you can buy it so cheap, I mean $3, you can't beat that, right? Just buy a bunch of colors and play around with it. Maybe get a, um, a cabinet door or a piece of wood and try it on there first if you're afraid to do your piece and then go through all that work and not like it. But remember, you can always go back over this too. It's paint. You can always paint right over everything, anything you want. I have done that so many times. I have painted pieces of furniture that just didn't sell. And um, nobody liked the color, I guess. So I just tell people, if you want it, if you like the piece and you like the uh, design of it, I can always paint it whatever color you want. So that's how I can kind of get rid of some things along the way. And just paint over it. So I'm just going to kind of brush that out. There's no rhyme or reason for this. Now watch, I'm going to show you with this other brush too, how this other brush works. See how nice that goes in there? Gets right into the cracks. See how it gets right in the cracks there? Right into those grooves. Brush it on. And there you go. I'll do this one piece here. This is all I'm doing is putting this right over top of the piece. I did not sand this. All I did was clean it. Did nothing to it. That's a beautiful thing about chalk paint, especially if you're new at painting furniture. This is the best thing for you to practice on, using chalk paint. There's really no way of messing this up. But remember, all of these pieces, they're your own design. So don't worry about, you know, are you doing it right, are you not doing it right, are the colors right? The more you play with it, the better you'll get at it. And uh, every piece is unique anyway. You're never going to be able to duplicate a piece. Exactly, anyway. I mean, you might get close, but not, not exactly. I'm just going to kind of go over this. Get up underneath there. And I'm just going to continue on and paint this whole piece out. And then after we're done with this, we're gonna go ahead and start doing our blending process and that's gonna be the fun part for you. So hang in there, get it done, and I'll see you in a few. We are ready now to go into step three of this process and this is the blending process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add two more colors to this base color. So now that we have this all nice and dry, and let it dry for about an hour, chalk paint dries pretty quickly, we're gonna go ahead and start blending. So here are some of the things you're gonna need. You're gonna need three colors. You're gonna need your base color, which was the uh, dramatic blue that we worked with. And then we're gonna use, and that was a Sherwin-Williams color. And now these two are uh, bare Home Depot colors. And this one here is called Citrus Peel, that's the green. And the navy blue color is called Nocturne Blue, something like that, N-O-C-T-U-R-N-E, blue. Whoever names these, God bless them. I have no idea how they come up with these names. So those are the three colors I'm going to use. This is the chalk paint that I made. 
And uh, well, the other thing you're gonna need is a brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my square brush on this because I wanna be able to get into these corners nice and neatly and blend it nicely. So this is what I'm gonna use. And then we're gonna need water. So I just took an old Glass Plus you know, bottle and added water to it. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start out with just spraying this, okay? We need water on it. Not a ton, but we wanna get it wet. And we're gonna start adding our color. So I'm gonna start with the green, citrus green first. And I'm gonna start blending this. So if you see it's kind of on there a little thick, you can keep adding water to it. Don't worry about it dripping. It's okay. It can drip. You can go catch it as it goes, okay? We're just gonna keep adding it on. See how that blends really nice? And then I'm gonna go in here and I wanna add my green in here because I want it to highlight in the recessed areas. And I'm just gonna keep going back and forth. Get a nice smooth finish. And as you can see, I work really fast. You have to kind of work fast. You don't want this drying up on you. And I'm just gonna keep adding water as I go and a little bit of paint. I'm just gonna kind of sporadically put this on here. See how that's kind of chalky looking? Like kind of, you can see the end. You wanna have that smoothed out. So just keep adding in. This is a lot of fun. You can, you can do so many different colors with this and just have a blast with it. Get really creative. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add some of my blue. I'm using the same brush. I'm just gonna add some of that dark blue in there and watch how it starts blending. See that? See how it's adding a lot of depth? I'm going to add a little in here. Whoops, I think I got too much on there. Which is fine because I'm just going to go ahead and start adding it down here. I have too much on the brush. So just keep blending it in. The nice thing is, if it's too much, you can go over it with another color. And you'll see this in a second. I'll show you how you can kind of fix that. Grab some of this here and bring it up here. Blend that in. Now watch, I'm gonna just take some of my blue, just very little, and I'm gonna add some blue into the corners here. See how that blends in there really nicely? Now I want to add a little more green in here. And if I get too much on there, I can always go back with my base color. See how pretty that is? I'm going to add some more blue in here. I really want that to pop out. A little more in there. There we go. See that? There we go. See how that's starting to blend? See the colors? And you can do as dark or as light as you want. There is no fast rule for this. This is your own creation. Have fun with it. Make it your own. Just make it your own. I'm going to add some more blue in here because that's too much lime in there. I want those panels to pop a little bit better. Get a little drip. Don't worry about it. And grab it and pull it out. There we go. See how this is coming along? So I'm going to add a little more blue up here. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. You can have it highlight in the corners. A little bit more on one end than the other. I'm going to go back in with some of my base color right here. And then add a little dark blue to give some contrast. 
Then you step back and take a look at it every once in a while so you can see what you're doing. There you go. Just keep blending as you go. Don't add too much water at one time because if you do, it'll be it'll just keep blending out. It'll just start getting softer and softer, and you won't be able to see the contrast going on. Add some blue in there. And then once we add that wax to it, it's really going to give it a whole nother level. Kind of softly, kind of just dry brush over it, very softly. And add some color in there. Kind of get my corners a little deeper. And I'm just going to keep doing this all the way around until I like it. That's all you gotta do. Step back and take a look. Add a little more blue up here. deepen this up a little bit so I'm going to add some of my navy in here just to kind of give it a little more depth in there now if you like the pastel look just keep going with the pastel colors and don't you know add too much of the dark in there but I like having a little bit of contrast see down here, but I'm going to add some down here, a little teeny bit of water. I'm just going to sporadically put it on there, just a little squirt, just enough to blend. See that? And I'm going to add some blue. Now you can wait till this top here dries a tad and you can add more color to it to you know deepen it if you keep trying to add your paint over the wet paint it's just going to keep blending so if you want it a little darker then just wait for it to dry up a little bit and then go back in which i'll show you in a second here because i'm going to do that now this paint that i got Remember, it was only a cup of paint. So I had three cups of paint. That'll do this entire project, and I'll have leftover. So you don't need to spend a lot of money on this. Making your own chalk paint can be well worth it, because let's face it, if you bought this piece really inexpensive, that's great, and then you can make your money back on it if you don't spend a lot of money on the product. But if you're spending $40 a port on it, that's what, uh, 80, $120 worth of paint. And you know, that you have to include that leftover because you're not using it on this project. So if you're spending that kind of money on your project, you really can't sell the piece for very much. You know, you can't ask uh, three, you know, $400 for something like this. It's just not gonna sell depending on where you live. So you really have to 
watch your cost and what you're spending. I'm going to soften that up in there. I really like to add that blue, that deep blue over the dark blue, because it really pops that up nicely. And just step back every once in a while and take a look at what you're doing. So you can see where you want to add or where you want to feather out. here. Just adding a little bit of blue. It's way too much. I'm just feathering it out. This was really fun. I can see this like in a, like a deep pink, like almost like a bubblegum pink with some green. Oh my gosh, that would be amazing. I might have to do one on that. That'd be fun for like a little girl's room. So we're just gonna keep doing this all the way around. I don't wanna play with that too much in here. Because all I'm doing is moving around wet paint at some point. Going a little more green in there, kind of a limey green, which kind of gives it that Key Westy kind of look. This is always fun too for like if you're doing that coastal look. Very beachy, you know, fun. There we go. See how it's coming along? So you just keep playing with it. You just have to learn to know when enough is enough. Because as an artist, we kind of just keep wanting to do things over and over and keep playing with it because that's our thinking. But sometimes you just have to know when to stop because you, you can overdo a piece of furniture as, um, as well. So just know your, know your stopping point. Okay, now we're back to do the last two steps of this project, and as you can see, this is already done, already dried, and I just love the color combination. But like I mentioned earlier, you can use any colors you want. So have fun, get creative, and just have a good time with it. There's no rules or rhyme or rhythm to this. There's no set rules to it. You can do anything you want. You can blend as much as you want. You can add as much color as you want. So just go ahead and have fun and experiment, okay? So now, earlier I was telling you also that, um, you know, you can open up the door and do the inside here. I just do it at the end because I want all my blending done at the same time. But you can actually take a screwdriver and just pop that open and do it at the same time. Just do it as you're doing the project, okay? I'm not gonna do that right now. Could you? It's the same thing I just showed you on the front. Now inside, I did not paint this yet, but I'm going to later. Um, I'm even thinking about putting some wallpaper back in these panels right here, just to kind of pop it up and give it some more, you know, make it a little more interesting. So we're gonna go ahead and close this off. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna sand it down a little bit, and then we're going to use a wax on here. And I'm gonna show you a little trick with your wax as well. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna take a sanding block, and I'm just going to lightly, sand some of my edges. You don't want to over distress. Just do a little bit. Usually it's on the wear and tear areas, like on the corners and the edges, like that. I'm just going to take and lightly sand some back right around the edges. 
Do that. See that? Really simple. You can even go into your detailed areas here if you want to pop that up. See how that pops that up now? There you go. And then you can see the detail of your stencil, your lace stencil design as well. So I'm just going to lightly sand, mainly in the corners. Very gently. Now, hey, if you mess up and you do too much, you can always add some more paint to it. The beautiful thing about this finish. There we go. And see how the light wood is coming through from the background? That's the color we originally started out with. Make it really easy. Now after I'm done distressing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a um, wax and I'm using a semi-dark wax. It's um, like a brown color. And I'm going to use my square brush to do that. Now sometimes when you're rubbing your wax in here, it's a little hard. It gets a little hard after a while. So here's a little trick for you. If you use some mineral spirits in here, it'll help spread it easier. So what I do is I just get a cup. I pour a little teeny bit of mineral spirits in there and I just dunk my brush into it. This will help loosen up the wax and go on a lot smoother. I you love these little tricks. You can just take and add your mineral spirits to your brush. And I like using my square brush. It uh, gets into the crevices really good. And I'm just going to Start rubbing my wax on there. See how much smoother, how much easier it is to put that on? And watch what happens when I do this. It pops that color out and it's giving it even some more depth to it. It just enriches it and it also helps seal this product. Now if you don't want to use a wax and you don't want to have this, you know, uh, umber tint to it, you can always just add a polycrylic sealer to your finish or nothing at all for that matter. Now, if you're going to be doing the inside of your cabinet, I would suggest using a polycrylic, something like this, the Minwax, and seal the inside because you're gonna be putting things in there and it's gonna scratch it up. This will help protect it. So you just keep going with this. Now watch this. See how you can get into the corners really nicely with this brush? And just keep wiggling it in, rubbing it on, trying to get in one direction after you've done getting it on there. Smoothing it out. It goes on so much smoother when you use a little mineral spirit. Now I'm just going to keep doing this until I get my desired look. Until I'm done adding it in. See the difference between this here and that. See how it brought up that color? Not only that, I love the smell of this stuff. I don't know why, but it smells good to me. I love it. I guess you have to be a paint lover. Just dipped my brush back into my mineral spirits. I'm rubbing it in again. Now watch this, how pretty this is going to look. <clears throat> now if you get too much wax on your project, you're having a hard time blending it out, you can always take and just keep brushing it into the next area. Or you can take a rag, grab a rag here, and you can just kind of rub it off. Okay? Let's do that. Any old rag. I like it in the corners a little bit darker. I don't mind if this extra wax in the corners. I think it just gives it more interest. See how nicely that goes on? If you're using wax, sometimes you, you see people rubbing and rubbing and they're using a lot of their you know, upper arm uh, strength to try and get it on there. This is where the mineral spirit comes in. Look, I'm not, I'm not giving it a lot of work here. 
just kind of putting it on. Less work for me. Unless you're trying to build up your upper arms, no need to work any harder than we have to, right? And just keep rubbing that on there. Look at that. Look at this. See how that comes up? Hope you can see that from there. And you can use different color waxes too. They got black or clear. So experiment a little bit, see what you like. And this beautiful thing is they all come out different. Everybody could be doing the same finishes in the same colors. And believe me, they're all going to look different. There we go. Look how beautiful that is. I'm going to have one more little special treat for you at the end. I'm going to show you something that I think you're going to love. I do. We're going to make hardware, two knobs for this piece. To really bump it up some more and give it some more interest. And not only that, if you're selling these product, um, projects that you're making and you're making your own hardware, you're making really interesting, you can actually ask more money for them because it's not like your standard hardware from the store. So now that I got this all done. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make some hardware for the door and then I'll just finish up the rest later. But you get the gist of it. Just use your wax, any kind of wax that you're using. I don't have any particular brand that I work with. I've been trying a lot of different ones. And you can actually make your own wax. Save yourself some money. See that? See how beautiful that looks? Okay, so now that we're done with this piece, I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how to make some hardware. Last step of this project is going to be making our hardware. So I'm going to show you how to make a door pull out of a shell. This is just a regular shell that I made this beautiful, look at how pretty this is, door pull. Now let me show you how I did that. Here's what you're going to need. You're going to need a shell. And then you're going to need this connector. It's a bolt connector. They're really hard to find in the right size. So I'm going to give you my resource on where to get those. Then what we're going to do is glue the connector onto the shell with Gorilla Glue. Now I've tried a ton of different glues trying to make this work. And the only thing I found that really works is Gorilla Glue. Now as you can see, I have gloves on for two reasons. One, you don't want to get Gorilla Glue on your fingers. It's really hard to get off. It literally has to just wear off. Um, and you don't want to have your finger glued to your project. Really be careful with this. It's uh, pretty serious when you get this stuck on you. You probably end up in the emergency room having to take it off. So wear gloves, Gorilla Glue this to the, uh, to the shell. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a piece of styrofoam and let it just sit there and dry. So once that's dry, I'm gonna, I don't even know how many hours I had it sitting there dry. I think overnight. Then I'm going to just take the shell again. And we're going to use alcohol ink. I don't know if you've ever used this stuff, but it's amazing. And there's another reason why you want to wear gloves, because we're going to pour alcohol ink on here to get that effect that I just showed you. And here's how it comes in these little tiny tubes. And the first time I did this, I didn't have gloves on. So I had blue fingers for a couple days until I realized it wasn't coming off. And I literally had to soak my fingers in um, bleach to get it off. So you're just going to hold up your um, shell and you're just going to do little droplets and then turn it just keep turning it just pour it on there not pour it on there but you know what i mean just drop it on there in sections like that and it comes in a variety of different colors so you want to have some open areas where it's white because now i'm going to use this green color and i'm going to go in between those areas of the blue and they're gonna kind of blend together. And as you turn it, it's gonna create this amazing design. 
But see why I'm using gloves? See how it's dripping on me? There we go. So I'm going to add a little more blue to this. It has a little bit too much green. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? I love, I love, love, love this look. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Now take this after you're done and put it onto a piece of styrofoam so it'll dry, just like that. Once that's dry, then you can apply it to your project. Now let me tell you a little bit about, I'm going to take these off, about these screws. Now when you get your connectors, make sure your screws are the right, um, I, I don't know what to say, width for these. This I think is a one, let me see what it is. Hold on. It's a quarter inch, 20 by one inch. Now they come in different lengths. So what happened was I bought the one and a half inch and it did it was too long. So you're just gonna make sure you get the right length so it only comes out a little bit. And then all you do is you screw it in. And there you got a beautiful drawer pull. Is that the cutest thing ever? Look at that. So you have room in there to open up your drawer because you got what? this is not connected to anything. So you can get your fingers in there. But look at how pretty that looks with this piece. Now you can make you can make these out of anything. You can even take your old knobs that you had on there. I would spray paint them white first uh, because I tried it with a, like a brass colored and putting the, the uh, alcohol ink on there, but it didn't come up as pretty and vibrant. So I would spray paint those first and then go ahead and do that because it'll just enrich it some more. So anyway, there's our project. We've got a beautiful piece of furniture with a three color chalk paint design on here and our uh, raised stencil and our beautiful knob. Hope you enjoyed this video. I would love to see your projects. Please post them on Ask Cheryl Fawn if you're on that group, uh, Facebook group, or the PYOP Facebook group as well. Looking forward to seeing your projects. Have a blessed day.